This is the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Matt Ryan and the Indianapolis Colts taking on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, it's a good matchup in the AFC South between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Indianapolis Colts. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. These two teams, division rivals, of course. And you remember back to Week 18 last year, although Colts fans don't want to remember back to Week 18 last year. The Colts needed a win. And the Jags, they were kind of looking ahead to 2022. But the two win Jags came up with one of the shockers of the season. They stunned the Colts 26 to 11 in Jacksonville. And that loss ultimately kept Indianapolis home for the playoffs. Back to Robinson now on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through it with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game, watching him try to take away that area of the field. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that. It seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. with Taylor to begin the drive. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. 
They were looking for a little spark and some breathing room. They got it right there, a gain of 14 and a first down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was coming, whatever is in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. So a little breathing room now. First and 10 at the 17. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run probing now early to try and get things done later. Now it's Ryan. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And not much happening there. He's taken down, but a late penalty flag in the backfield. And this looks like a roughing call. So certainly a defensive mistake here in the first quarter, getting hit with a roughing the passer call. And that hurts not just because of the yardage he gave up and give him a fresh set of downs, but that brought the home crowd into this one. And when you go on the road, your job is to silence the crowd, not energize them. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and 10. Here's Ryan. He'll find Paris Campbell, that's complete. And he'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. A very solid gain of 27. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Running straight ahead, Taylor. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Up the middle, here's Taylor. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Here's Ryan to throw. Throw over the middle, gonna be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. And he is gonna have a Colts first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven yard gain there on third and two. Well, they've had a great impressive drive going here and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. the handoff this is Taylor this will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker eight yard gain second and two 
Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Ball on the eight, second and two. Here's Ryan. This will be caught just inside the 10. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. The Colts have liked Big Mo Alley Cox more and more over his four seasons with the team. Initially known just for his blocking, he's developing into a nice target as a tight end, and there he picks up a first down. From the two, here's first and goal. Ryan. Look at end zone, and he's got his man. It's Woods. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Colts go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. He got it figured out by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7-0 Indy. A 10-play drive that time. And a Jelani Woods touchdown catch capped things off. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. Over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out they had to punt it away. This time hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. Start it out. Robinson. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Now Lawrence to throw. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now Lawrence. And Ingram hauls it in. And he is going to have a Jags first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. 
No gain on the play. It'll be second down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Here's second and ten. Second down and a run by Robinson. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. The Jaguars on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is eight. And able to find Kirk complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. We knew he was close to the line of scrimmage, and they say he stepped over. Well, when you see him in that position, you think he's become a runner. As a DB, you start to react towards the line of scrimmage. They can often throw it over your head. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. So the punt rolls out of bounds, and they'll have pretty good field position here up near the 40-yard line. Matt Ryan and the Colts heading back out on offense. He had the short touchdown pass on their previous drive, and they'll begin again here on first and 10. throw is Ryan the toss here completed to Pittman oh it's time to give a little credit there to the defense they played that very well because it was a drag route and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field he was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line but once he made the catch nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage from the 38 Ryan Slant pass hauled in by Campbell. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First and 10, Taylor now. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. And that's a loss of seven on the first down play. You see that celebration from him after that stop? Those corners don't normally have the chance to get behind the line of scrimmage and hand them big losses. So when he got that opportunity, he certainly made it a memorable one. Now, after the loss, he'll have to navigate a second and 17. Again, it's Taylor. 
And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Ryan. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. That's Foley Fadukasi who got in there and finished off the play. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. On fourth down, Matt Hawk is on to punt. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 49. They begin the drive with Robinson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That play was all Bobby Okereke as he got there and dragged him down for the loss. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Lawrence with the handoff to Robinson. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there. And the defense was ready to jump in and deny it. And they did. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. Now he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> he's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage.
six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Seven yards there at a first down. And Mark, 2021 is the season Jonathan Taylor arrived as one of the best backs in the NFL. He became the first Colt to ever win the running back triple crown, leading the league in carries, yards, and touchdowns. He didn't stop there, also leading in first downs, runs of 20-plus yards, and he had the longest run of the NFL season. Simply put, Taylor was the league's best at what he does by almost every possible metric. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On second down, it's Taylor. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Ryan. Campbell making the catch. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. First down with Ryan. Catch made here by Campbell. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Second down at five. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. 68 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here.
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Ryan. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And just a yard to go here on second down. Now it's Ryan. He finds his man complete. That's Campbell. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 18. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. On the handoff, Taylor. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. It's Ryan. And it's caught. Touchdown. Paris Campbell, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. McLaughlin for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. That drive along spanning 15 plays and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown unit is out on the field and they will send this one away fields it right around the goal line and up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 and now out come the Jags and they're in a bind early here down 14 nothing are you worried at this stage or still too early you're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. 
Throwing again on second and ten. Lawrence, quick slant, caught by Kirk. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Come on, sit. Hands over. On play action, Lawrence. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Lawrence. Here's a screen for Robinson. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But it's the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. That's complete to his running back, Taylor. Calling a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Working with a second and four. Looking to throw. Ryan. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Again, Ryan. He finds his man complete. That's Campbell. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Mike 
On first and ten, it's Ryan. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Touchdown, Colts! Mo Alley Cox from three yards out. And the Colts will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now 21 to nothing. That time, a six-play drive. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Lawrence. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Lawrence will throw. ETN bringing in another one. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40 yard line. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. 
They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. On first down, Lawrence over the middle complete. It's Jones. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Looking downfield for Jones. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 52 yards. I don't think we'll ever get enough of watching one-handed catches, and when they pay off, they are spectacular. But how about the times they don't pay off? And coaches go, two hands, two hands still works. <laughs> I know, but they, they go for them so often now that I'm almost starting to take them for granted. Yeah, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Because these are sensational type plays. Especially that one with a defender right there. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. They'll look to throw again. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence with a hook up to Marvin Jones. And the Jaguars are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7.
After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. <laughs> Running left, Taylor. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On third down, Ryan. A throw on the money there to Doolin. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a give to Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he's across the 40. Three extra yards to the 43. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Third and two, now Ryan. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt goes out of bounds. Where will they put it? They'll put it just inside the 45-yard line. Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars back again. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. He'll complete this to Ingram, his tight end. He's got room at the 30, and he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. It's a gain of 35. They started this drive with terrific field position, and it's going to get even better after that play. Had great options with where they started, so they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off.
So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. DeForest Buckner gets him for a loss of eight. What great push up front. Trading for DeForest Buckner two years ago, still a shrewd move for the Indianapolis Colts. He's anchored their defense with 16 and a half sacks in that time, as well as garnering all pro and pro bowl honors. and the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Jags are back within a score. So, Charles, they had him double covered in the end zone. It still was not enough. I wonder if they're thinking to themselves now, two didn't work. Do we go for three guys on him next time? Because he fought through all that extra attention, got himself into a great position where his quarterback felt confident enough to challenge the coverage and threw it his way. What a big-time play right there, both by the quarterback trusting him and by him going up and getting it. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And they're back with it, a touchdown at After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And their lead cut in half by that touchdown a moment ago. They are up seven as they begin this drive first and ten. Ryan. That's going to be caught by Allie Cox. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Call that a very strong gain of 24. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. One play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's Ryan. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. I would describe the way that he's played today as mature. He's already moved on mentally from that incompletion, and he's more than ready to throw his next pass downfield. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Ryan. He finds his man complete. That's Campbell. 
And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Ryan will throw again. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 36. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. 93 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. A really nice effort that time. 12 yards on the keeper, picking up the first. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Here's Hines. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Full to run show, Fadukasi there on the tackle. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Let's put that team on. All right, 25 to nine. Six, it's a jet sweep. This is Pittman. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Mike, check, 33. 33. Ryan now to throw on third down. The pass underneath. Here's Hines with it. And the Colts are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Four down, four down. They go play action now, Ryan. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brought down by Trayvon Walker on the pass rush. The first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure.
They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. This is Hines. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the eight yard line. Partner, I know we're in a goal to go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. So good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Here's Ryan to throw. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. So a good spin move, but not a whole lot to show after as he's taken down. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And no return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start to drive at the 25. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense that next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. Now Lawrence. And completes it to Kirk over the middle. With a quick slant, good for eight and a first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Decided to hand it off that time on the run pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. A play fake for Robinson. Now Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Evan Ingram, the tight end. And it's third down at two. A 
not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Blocking at the point of attack there was very strong. He had a couple of running lanes. And I never want to overlook the offensive line, but that's what they get paid to do. How about the quarterback? Everyone thinks all he's going to do is throw the football. His movement and deception can help a running game as well. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Here's Lawrence to throw. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Looking to throw again on second down. Lawrence, he targets Ingram for another grab. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 13-yard line. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the five, here's second and two. A man coming off a washout 2021. It's Travis Etienne. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. offense on third down today six conversions and nine tries they've done a great job of picking these up this time it's third and three now Lawrence this is caught and they will touch him down but not before he gets the first they get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue and in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They go play action now. Lawrence, and that is caught. Touchdown, 
Jacksonville. Dan Arnold from a yard out. And the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So they go play action, three tight ends out there in the heavy set. Well, they showed everything that suggested running play. Just what you mentioned, three tight ends, heavy formation, able to go play action off of it because if you're a defender, you're thinking it's a running play with that much beef on the field. But they passed it, and they got six out of it. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. It's the former Buckeye, Paris Campbell, out with the rest of the offense here. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10. At their own 24. Ryan. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. The one with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They run with Hines. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a toss play, it's Hines. And this time they're able to bottle him up as they'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Meanwhile, Ryan's throw into the hands of Pittman here. It'll be a gain of five. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. To throw is Ryan. This to Hines on the drop off. And he is going to have a Colts first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and 10. Now it's Hines. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A 
gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now Ryan on first down. And this one complete to Doolin. And they'll work this down inside the 30. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. This looks like a free play for Ryan. Now that's into the hands of Mo Ali Cox, the tight end. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. Ryan. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they're going to be set up now with the ball at the 13-yard line. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Throwing again, Ryan. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. And the Colts are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four yard line. Well, he does have one touchdown in the game already. And while this one won't go for six, it's enough to get him first and goal. But you and I both know he's going to be a little upset he didn't cross the goal line for a second time in this one. Might want the ball here on the next play. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Hines. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists. And if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down here. And he takes it in for a cold score. Naeem Hines, it's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Colts will add to their fourth-quarter lead. And that's certainly an important touchdown there. It makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. 
So that drive spans 13 plays, and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 27. Now Lawrence to throw. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Lawrence on the move to his left. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I did like his decision-making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down, and don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. On second down, a run with ETN. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Now Lawrence, throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Working with a second and three. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Wow. Calling no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Lawrence on third down. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. Patterson's kick is good. And this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Indy set to go on offense once more. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. Here's a handoff to Hines to begin the drive. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 52 yards on the ground for him so far. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Two yards, good enough for a first. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Ryan. And as he throws, he lost the football. It's loose. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now Ryan. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Trayvon Walker picks up his second sack of the afternoon. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out, pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Here's Matt Hawk now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And where did this one go out? Not good. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to say inside the 35-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Well, the defense got its job done, forcing the punt. Now the formula pretty simple. They need to find the end zone here. A field goal doesn't help them much. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Lawrence will throw. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Lawrence with the handoff to Robinson. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. 
We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Second and eight. Running out of the gun with ETN. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Throwing now, Lawrence. Flush to his right. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence with a hook up to Marvin Jones. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Extra point try now for Patterson. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Just a four-play drive that time, and it culminates in a Jags touchdown. yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Now this one complete on the slant round. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, that's a good first step, but several steps still to go. They still have time for the possible game-winning field goal. Time for them to be quick and hurry at the same time. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Ryan. Pass complete to Alley Cox. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it'll be second down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Finding Pittman, and he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Ryan finding Pittman there for the Colts' first down. Time of factor as Ryan will hustle him to the line. Back to throw again. He'll check this down to Hines. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. Here's Ryan. A throw on the money there to Doolin. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 37. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game.
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Up the middle they go. Hines. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. The clock showing just one tick. This for the win. And his kick here is good. And the Hoosier State will celebrate tonight as the Colts have won it. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did, and just keeping it clean in a game like this with all these points, you don't see that very often, even at the highest level. Job well done by both sides. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.